really the goal is to give you an understanding of how our application works, where to get the information. And in the end, we hope to get your best application. So um, here we go. Here's the agenda for this meeting. We're gonna talk a little bit about process, get some highlights on what's new, go over the traditional eligibility requirements, uh, provide a funding synopsis, and then start to dig into the different factors for the program elements. There are two basic applications here, the STBG, which also includes the CMAC and SNK. As most of you know, SNK is, is precisely STBG, but our, our friends at in Frankfurt call it SNK. So it's the same as STBG in Ohio. Um, the process is, is slightly different. So we'll, we'll make note of that. And then the transportation alternatives is a separate application with the different elements there. And Summer will cover that later. And the schedule, and then we'll bring up the new Excel application for a brief highlight of that, and then provide you with the uh, staff contact information that you might need. Okay, just a word on process. Um, we have CMAC calls every other year, and this is the year for that to occur. So we'll be combining the STBG and the CMAC. Uh, we'll, we'll mix those as is best for our program. It doesn't really matter for you all. Um, it'll be sort of behind the scenes kind of thing. Federal dollars are federal dollars. Uh, there are some different stipulations, but we'll find elements that can be uh, can best fit your project, and if we can use CMAC, uh, we will. If not, uh, we'll accomplish that in another way. Uh, each recipient or each applicant can submit up to two SDBG slash CMAC applications and one TA application in Ohio. In Northern Kentucky, eligible recipients can submit up to two SNK applications and one TA application. A little bit about what's new. You may recall last year's application was an online form. Uh, we've changed that this year. We're going to an Excel, Microsoft Excel based application. I hope you'll find it easy to use and effective. And um, so we'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Um, also included in this new Excel application is uh, embedded in it is the project application assistant, the PAA. So you don't have to get out of the, uh, the uh, spreadsheet itself uh, to activate this. And um, uh, that's a nice, yes. I have a question. Do you want me to wait till the end or go ahead and ask you now? I, let me finish this slide and then I'll take the question. Okay. Uh, direct link to the PAA is embedded in the spreadsheet itself and the ability to copy and paste that into your application. You still have to put the particular values into the cells, but it'll be right there for you. So I think it's a nice change. Plus it'll be nice for us as reviewers of those applications to be able to see uh, where your project is effectively. And um, so it'll improve the efficiency and the accuracy of our review as well. Uh, we have some changes to the air quality score uh, as was mentioned and approved last month by the ICC. We have a new EJ definition, uh, same thing was reviewed last month and adopted by the ICC. Cost estimate this year, this year we've um, tried to make that more consistent. You can submit a up to a 10% contingency. We were starting to get contingencies across the board, some, some higher than 10%, some lower than 10%. Uh, but this year it'll be a straight 10% if you choose to use a contingency. Um, and of course, this year's call includes Ohio CMAC. Regina, you had a, a question? Yes, from Jessica Green. If submitting two, do you need to rank your preference? You know, uh, that's a good question. Um, not on your application itself, but if you would maybe send, if you would send Andy or Summer a note that says, you know, really this is our most our highest priority project, that would be helpful. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, here you see the 
list of eligible applicants. Uh, it's the same cast of friends that we've always had, area development districts, cities, counties, towns, transit authorities, port authorities, transportation improvement districts, TIDs, other units of government eligible to sign contracts with KYTC or ODOT. Uh, typically in Ohio, uh, we've kind of done it both ways. The townships can, they can actually submit um, or they can go through the county and we won't count that against the county's number of applications. So either way is fine. Uh, basic project eligibility, uh, projects need to be in or consistent with the 2050 plan. Now, as you know, our 2050 plan doesn't highlight every reconstruction or small area project. That includes projects that are typically uh, capacity enhancing, or it also does identify regional trail projects and things of that nature, the higher level stuff. But we recognize that every project is not listed in there. So it's if it is one of those that is adding capacity and is regionally significant, it has to be in our plan. If it's, uh, if it's not one of those types of projects, it simply needs to be consistent. The STVG slash SNK need to be located within the urbanized boundary. And if you don't know where that's at, I can show you how to get that. TA projects can be anywhere in the region. Roadway projects, they need to be on the federal aid system. And the federal aid system is defined as a functionally classified collector or higher. We can't use federal funds on local streets. The application uh, needs to come with a 20% at least, at least a 20% match. And just remember that it's a reimbursement arrangement, meaning that as you begin to construct your project and submit bills to uh, your state agency, either ODOT or KYTC, uh, they will reimburse you for the 80% of that cost or whatever the match is. Uh, again, maximum applications per LPA, uh, two in Ohio, STBG, and two Kentucky SNK. And then for TA, it's, it's one per LPA. Next, please. Okay, here is a map that shows the urbanized area. So anything with color here in brown, as well as the the Oxford area and the Hamilton Middletown area. Now there's a portion that's part of the Dayton urbanized area up in um, Warren County, that yellowish color. Uh, we don't accept applications for our STBG funds in that area. Those are, um, those applicants need to go to the Dayton MPO. Bob, I have another question. Go ahead. For cost estimates that should be in current year dollars with a 10% contingency, can inflation be accounted for in the estimates since there are often several years between the time of funding and construction? The answer is yes, but we want the cost in current year dollars and we will apply the, the inflation factor and we'll use ODOT and or KYTC's inflation factor information to do that. Good question. Here you see uh, in tabular form, uh, a summary of our program for this year. I mentioned during the ICC meeting that we had CRISA funds and those are incorporated here. Um, what may not have been entirely clear is that with the CMAC, uh, we may bring in some FY26 dollars into this. Um, the ODOT, or not ODOT, the Ohio Statewide uh, CMAC Committee is a little in our opinion, too far out. Um, so, but we want to still be ready in case we have the opportunity to use future year dollars. Um, that's a roundabout way of saying we're going to we're going to program probably a lot of um, all of 25 and most of 26 dollars, and maybe if we um, need to some 27 dollars, and that would be consistent with the the Ohio guidance. Um, here you see Ohio STBG, we have about 40 million. The maximum you can apply for is 6 million. Uh, for TA, 750,000, we have 2.2 million. Kentucky SNK, we have 9 million to hand out. And the maximum per application is 5 million. And the TA side of things in Kentucky, funding available is, um, 
500,000 and the maximum funding request per application is 500,000. So I don't know what we'll get there. Um, maybe one project, who knows? But uh, I guess the competition will be very, very fierce. Bob, I have another question. Yes, go ahead. Is it possible these funding amounts will increase if federal infrastructure stimulus is passed? We have not seen that there will be highway or transit dollars in there. It's possible. Uh, I think actually Congress is probably pushing towards what Lori mentioned was a new highway bill. They can get that through. So I kind of, I kind of doubt it, but uh, all things are possible. Also, can you please clarify what PERWS stands for? Yeah, Summer, can you go back a slide? Uh, PE is designed, PE RWS is right away services. Now, technically you can't uh, get permission to go ahead with right away purchases, but you can do the groundwork with PE money. So that's what that's for. Okay, here is a list of eligible, not a complete list, not an exhaustive list, but it covers just about everything we've seen. Uh, eligible STBG type projects you can widen or build a new roadway, you can reconstruct, you can realign, you can do geometric improvements, you can add signals, you can incorporate access management techniques, other safety improvements, a wide range of those, uh, transit capital projects, including bus replacements, um, park and rides, transit uh, stations, those kinds of things are eligible. Bike and pedestrian facilities, of course, and intermodal facilities and freight facilities are all STP, STBG eligible type projects. Um, you might note that um, roadway, again, that note that roadway projects cannot be used on local routes. Um, so go ahead to the next slide there, Summer. Here's sort of a graphic um, perspective on how the actual process itself works. There's two sides of the SCBG coin. One is for the modal factors. The other is for the planning factors. You add them together and you come up with the total and then we rank the projects by their score. And the point is to provide really opportunity for all modes to compete on a level playing field. And um, as you imagine uh, that each of the mode has its individual elements that are different from the other modes. And then the planning factors for all projects are the same. So um, there is a good part where there's a lot of overlap, a lot, a lot of things in common there. Okay, let's dig into the modal factors starting with roadway. Uh, I will go through all the modal factors and I'll hand it off to Andy Reeser and other staff members will be following me and then in the end I'll come back and do a wrap up. So here's sort of the nitty gritty of the application itself. Um, again, starting with roadway factors. Uh, we have a lot of elements on the roadway side and you can see them, uh, safety, impact on safety, traffic, travel time, impact on travel time, freight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those that have the red asterisks are primarily objective measures and, and can be had through our project application assistant. Um, each of these is worth five points, but let me start with the uh, first with safety. It's based on the crash rate and the PAA itself has all the crash rate information that we have. And so when you click on a road, it, the PAA will provide that information for you. Then you would take that and key it into the application. The impact on safety is qualitative. And so it's important here that you refer to Appendix A, which is included in the application to identify the primary project type. Let's say that um, your project is a roundabout. There's an element in that Appendix A that will identify that project type and uh, how much score it has. In this case, a roundabout is worth, I believe it's three points. 
Um, then of course the other things like traffic, all of our data that we have available is made available through this PAA. Uh, that includes the average daily traffic, uh, the travel time reliability. Uh, we have that on the NHS and it's the 80th percentile speed divided by the 50th percentile speed, uh, yada, yada, yada. And it, and it has a ratio and uh, within certain ranges and it matches the performance measures that we're required to use on our NHS. Now, there are lots of facilities in our region that you'll be applying for that are not on the NHS, and we know that. So uh, where we have travel time index, we'll use that. Uh, we'll also accept your, your guidance on maybe volume to capacity ratio if, you, if neither of those two things that I previously mentioned are available. Or if you've done a travel time um, analysis, your consultant perhaps, or your, your own staff, if, if we don't have it, give us information that might give us a, um, a hint on what the travel time reliability might be. And then um, the impact on travel time is a qualitative assessment. Um, give us your best uh, estimate on that and we'll do our best to uh, evaluate the, um, what the project would impact. And, and stay away from things like, um, okay, I'm repaving this street, so it's going to improve the travel time. Well, no, not really. Uh, you know, we're going to do something that has a, you know, do access management. Yes, that's going to have a nice impact on travel time. So um, we'll try to answer that question here, but it is subjective and uh, we'll work with you on that. Freight, um, the measure here is the percent truck, which can be had through the PAA. Pavement or bridge condition. Let's say you had a project that had a section of road that also included a bridge. Well, we'll take the worst case scenario. We'll, um, if your bridge is like in terrible shape but the roadway around it is, is okay or even pretty good, we'll allow the uh, bridge rating to carry the score on that one. Um, but uh, the measure for pavement is IRI. And if we don't have it and you have the uh, pavement condition rating, the PCR, We'll accept that. We can we can work with that. It'll give us a measure of of how the pavement is actually doing. Um, complete streets. Sometimes people get confused. Basically, look at your project area and where when the project is complete, your project, even if it's just one little element, but look at your look at the project area. What are the modes, the viable modes available to the users? when that project is complete. So let's say you have a roadway that has, it's on a fixed transit route and you're, it doesn't have sidewalks, but your project is going to add sidewalks. And um, so the complete streets analogy there would be, okay, it's one for um, motor vehicles, it's two for the fixed route transit, it's three for the pedestrians to walk, and it's four for um, cyclists who can use a road if it's um, sufficiently safe to do so. Um, interstate highways, you can't use, you can't get a, obviously a bike or a pedestrian mode there, but those will be accounting uh, for four of them. And um, there's one other that I'm forgetting. Um, Summer, help me out. What's the fifth one? Summer fell asleep. Sorry. No, I <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on switching the slides. It's what? The, what? The, freight. The, freight. No, it's not freight. Anyway, um, I'll get back to you on that. I'll check my notes. So I apologize. Next slide, please. No, no wait a minute. Status of project. I missed that one. Where the development of your project, where is it? let's say that you're just starting out as most of our applications are just starting out, then it gets the lowest score. It'll score um, zero or two. But if your project is further along, um, you know, all you're asking for is construction money. All your plans are done. You're ready to roll. Uh, that project would receive a five. Next slide, please. Okay, let's say that um, I'm not going to launch the PAA here, but here's the link if you wanted to jot it down. You don't really need to because as I mentioned earlier, the application itself is 
uh, the link is embedded. And basically when you click that, it brings up a GIS application with access to the data that I mentioned previously. And this is primarily, uh, it's most useful for roadways, but it has a lot of other uh, uses embedded in it as well. Um, I mentioned the traffic data, the crash data. Uh, there are some other resources in the truck percentage and IRI and bridge and pavement, so on and so forth. Um, but I also mentioned, um, I wanna mention that you can also see the functional class, the transit routes, the urban boundary, environmental justice areas and all that. So even when you're not doing an application, you might wanna to refer to this as a nice tool for data for your projects or just to satisfy your interest of, you know, some of the elements of this uh, PAA can be useful for. So I just wanted to, to point that out. I think we are, if we haven't already, we are very close to adding the um, regional bike uh, trails to that uh, layer, to that product. And so when you're doing your application, uh, you know, sometimes I guess you may not know if it's connection to a regional trail, a regional trail, or not a regional trail. And this will help you identify those so we can score your project consistently. Okay. Moving on to the transportation factors for transit projects. And um, we have six elements here, um, project type, and what we're looking for there, um, basically vehicles, fixed, fixed facilities or support. Uh, vehicles is obvious, fixed facility, like a park and ride or a transit center. And then support would be like a bus garage, maintenance facility, something like that. Uh, the vehicles would score five and the support would score um, one. Ridership impact, this is worth 10 points and it is a subjective score. So um, be honest with us, it's gonna be a high impact on ridership. It could score 10, if it's low, it will score less. Um, somewhere, somewhere in between for a medium. Impact on safety and security, same thing. Um, let us know how your, your project will impact those elements of safety and security. If we feel it's very high, we'll give it 10 points. Um, time to implementation. We like when projects move rapidly and if they're quick projects, they tend to score higher in this process. System impact. Um, looking, it's kind of a nuance here, but um, we want projects that could have a positive impact on uh, just the system, the passenger, or both. And if we get both, that's, um, that's the, the best part. We get five points for projects like that. Um, existing physical condition, let's say that you had a park and ride you were going to rebuild, you're going to tear it down and rebuild because it was in poor condition. Um, let us know that it's in poor condition and you would score 10 points in this physical condition. If you have buses that have been used in excess of the federal guidance, the FTA guidance. Uh, if you've used them well beyond those guidelines, those would be considered in poor condition and they could score 10 points. So those are the kind of things there. Next. Um, There's no support um, like electric infrastructure as well in that too, correct? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, John? You said you'll support electric infrastructure or like hydrogen infrastructure for alternative fueling as part of that? Yes, uh, yes that would be ineligible. That would be a fixed facility and potentially could earn points in the technology element that we'll get to under all planning factors. If we would propose to have bus, um, alternative fuel buses, do we need to separate out the infrastructure versus the actual vehicle? Probably. Or is that one grant? Uh, I, I think that would probably be two, but we can we can talk about that. That's, that's a good question. Let me, let me think about that a little bit. I think we would wanna keep the, the, the buildings separate from vehicles. I mean, FTA treats it separately. I think it would be different applications. Okay. I would lean that way too. Okay, moving on to factors for bike ped. 
I won't read them all. Uh, one of the biggest challenges though is the safety thing. Either one, there aren't a lot of crashes that involve bike ped or they're difficult to, to get. Um, the roadway stuff is pretty easy. The police show up and they GPS the accident location and they identify the type of crash and so on and so forth. Uh, with bike crashes, if you're out somewhere and there's no no one, no one around, but you have a, you know, something happens, you don't really report it. So we may find certain cases unreported. Uh, where uh, vehicles and, and bicycles and pedestrians mix, um, that's usually what we're able to get good, inf pretty decent information for. So this is, um, we're looking for data over a five year your project area. So um, I know that can be a challenge, but we'll work with you on that. You can get up to five points there. If your project actually does a really good job at addressing that safety problem, you can score up to five points. If it's you know a bad safety area, but your project really doesn't do anything to address it, uh, it would be considered low. As far as network connections, I mentioned earlier that um, the PAA would show the regional and the connections to regional or local type um, trails and or connections. Uh, that's what we're getting at here with 10 points. Now we're really looking for making connections to other systems so we can have a united uh, system that allows people to go somewhere to, to make their activity, to satisfy their trip, so on and so forth. And then feasibility. Um, I think what you really want to look for here is, yeah, we can build just about anything, but at what cost? If we have buildings right up to the sidewalk, you know, to insert a trail there would be almost incomprehensible as far as the cost and the disruption to the urban life. Um, so that would be not very feasible. If you had to build a you know, half a mile long bridge you know, that might be considered unfeasible in some cases. Uh, but if you were able to cantilever a, you know, a side path on an existing bridge, that would be expensive, but it might be very feasible. So um, let us know what, how your project stacks up feasibility and, and we'll, um, I know that's a subjective score, but we'll do our best to give a fair shake to the project. Bob? Yes. Couple questions. How is OKI defining regional trails? Regional trails um, would be the Little Miami Trail, the Great Miami Trail, the Riverfront Commons Trail. Um, summer, anything? Anything? Uh, oh, Lawson Way. Lawson Way and the uh, Green, the Lick, uh, no. Is there one milk? Is it Mill Creek? Mill Creek Greenway. Repeat that. Miami to Miami. Miami to Miami, yes. Yes. Second question, actually a couple more. Are there any changes to maximum score, scoring values with this round? I, I don't understand that question. Do you, Bob? Well, we did change scores for environmental justice. That uh, was raised from five to 10. The air quality and TA was reduced from 10 to five. Um, so the total possible score for STBG is now 110. It was 105 last, last year. Um, it's 95 for TA. Yeah, which doesn't, Necessary. I always liked 100, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything because you're competing against other projects within your project type. So 110 is just a number. Is that it, Regina? Um, Wade Johnson said Tri-State Trails can share the regional trails plan if that would be helpful for the map. No, I think we have what we need. Thank you. Okay, next slide, Summer. 
Oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't finish this one. Sorry. <laughs> Ahead of myself. Um, so network connections, feasibility, we talked about those. Existing surface conditions, um, like the roadway, but typically you won't have a IRI, but or a pavement, a PCR. Um, but if it's brand new, we're not going to give you any points in that category. If it's in really good condition, no points. But if it's dilapidated, um, obviously you would score points in that element. Complete streets, same as before. Um, one point for each viable mode, up to five. And then project status, that's the same as um, all the other projects. So where is it in the project development process? Next slide, please. Non-roadway freight projects. Now, here you see we really do value projects that remove large trucks from the roadway. So the impact on roadway con con uh, congestion is worth 20 points here. Um, the modal traffic flow is kind of the equivalent to the volume capacity of a roadway. Well, you might have the roadway, the volume, the capacity for uh, an intermodal facility. You know, if it's if it's maxed out, um, that would be high and it would score high. Project status, same as the other, where is it? Uh, is it closer to being construction? Um, I missed impact on safety, um, high, medium, low. Again, that's a subjective measure. Reliability, um, that has to do with the reliability of Generally speaking, commerce movement. Uh, let's say, let's use the example of uh, a project that uh, already has money from um, one of the highway funds of moving, or rather, rail transit, rail um, freight mode, uh, the conveyor over uh, over the roadway. That added great reliability. Move um, pig iron across from the river over to the rail without having to get on the roadway or interrupt traffic. So that was uh, very high on the reliability side of things. And then existing facilities like the others, those that are in poor condition that need to be rebuilt will score five. Those that are in good shape will score zero. Okay, now this is where I hand it off to Andy Reeser and he's gonna talk about planning factors for STBG. Thanks, Bob. Um, <clears> the <throat> one thing to note, Bob, complete streets, the modes in complete streets are motor vehicle, fixed transit route, pedestrian facility, bicycling facility, and traffic calming. I forgot traffic calming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll start talking about air quality. Um, air quality cost effectiveness. This is one of the factors that we changed slightly with this round. It was always been somewhat uh, subjective. So we're trying to make it a little bit more objective. And one of the ways we're doing this is to focusing on cost effectiveness. Um, so a project may receive points if it contributes to a redu reduction in vehicle miles traveled, vehicle hours traveled, or results in cleaner vehicle emissions. And project elements that have historically been evaluated as producing larger emission reductions per dollar invested will receive more points. And that cost effectiveness is based largely on a Federal Highway EPA study of nationwide CMAC projects. Um, results of that study have been modified to include a more diverse range of project elements as we might expect in a call for a, both STBG and CMAC projects. Uh, next slide, please. So here's the table that kind of that gives the scores that we will um, most likely give out for different project elements. Uh, project elements that contribute to reduced emissions cannot be combined to receive a higher score, but the most cost effective element uh, will be considered. And so there's many good STBG type projects that under this might not receive any points and that's just fine. That's just the way it goes. Um, but we do, we do want to still consider and give extra points for projects that focus or have some impact on 
improved air quality. Uh, next, please. Intermodal elements factor. Um, this is for new and direct connections between modes. Uh, for example, a new connection between barge and rail, uh, roadway to port, or a new pedestrian connection in transit would receive points under this factor. Next. Uh, here's an example of a new connection between two modes. This is a connection between barge and rail, a, a new conveyor belt system from the offloading area of the barge to a uh, rail connection, and that would receive three points. Next. And adding a uh, new sidewalk between an exist existing sidewalk and a bus stop would receive three points. Uh, but if that sidewalk was actually a shared use path, which allowed for biking as well, um, would score five points. Next, replacement expansion factor uh, gives preference to projects that invest in replacing rather than new facilities, uh, reflecting the OKI's Metropolitan Transportation Plan and it, its emphasis on uh, investing in existing infrastructure before building new infrastructure. Uh, so the number of points is based on the percentage of replacement versus percentage of expansion associated with the project. Next, please. Local share or match. Uh, you can earn up to 10 points here with a 50% match. Uh, the minimum 20% match will receive zero points. So there's a sliding scale uh, between zero points to 10 points, uh, depending on the match. We're only looking at the, uh, reg regarding local share, we're only looking at the phases where federal funds are being requested. So for example, if you're only requesting construction money, you can't use uh, right of way as part of your match. It has to be for that same um, phase that you're requesting funds for. Uh, technology, we continue to look for ways to invest in the advancement of transportation technology. This factor is worth up to 10 points. And there are several examples in the guidance document. Uh, examples include TISMO strategies, which are transportation systems management and operations, uh, items like that, optimizing traffic signals, real-time bus arrivals, uh, things like that. It's a little bit more subjective, but um, we hope you uh, encourage and include technology elements in your application. Next, please. History of project de delivery. Um, applicants with projects behind schedule or cancel will be assessed penalties on new applications. Um, the, the maximum penalty is minus 10 points. So basically this is a snapshot of OKI funded projects in the TIP on September 1st. And so you could, uh, an applicant who has had one project slip to a later year will be penalized minus three points. And an applicant who has had two or more projects slip to a later year will be penalized minus five points. And as I mentioned, canceled project will be minus 10 points. All right, now I'll turn it over to Florence to talk, talk about environmental justice. Good morning. Thanks, Andy. Good morning and once again, welcome. One of the questions on the application form, ask if your project will impact an environmental justice community. Individuals living in such a community are sometimes referred to as being members of traditionally underserved population groups, such as a minority or low income population group. The basis for this planning factor is the title is Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which states, that any program or activity that receives federal financial assistance must use those funds fairly and without discrimination. In addition to minority and low income communities, we here at OKI also include communities with a high percentage of elderly persons, zero car households, and people with disabilities. Keep in mind that an impact does not always have to imply something of a negative nature. An impact can also have a direct or indirect benefit. But if by chance there is a negative impact in regards to your project, again, it may be temporary, not permanent. Also remember that Bob mentioned earlier 
that you can take advantage of our project application assistant, which will help, help you to identify the location of EJ population groups. And if you're still uncertain about the location of your project site, then check with us. We are a resource, so use us and help make that application process a little easier for you and your staff. Next slide, please. On this slide are a few examples of potential impacts during the course of your project. Uh, the relocation of a bus stop, lane closure, uh, uh, on-street parking restrictions, uh, possible closure of park, uh, all of a public sidewalk. That's just to name a few potential impacts. But also don't forget that uh, when you are out there in the community with your project to, and folks, the residents living in that community are asking questions, are raising concerns, be sure to uh, give them be candid and give them honest answers. I have to tell you in my work of research outreach here at OKI, I'm often dismayed when I attend community council meetings and um, I hear more than, uh, more than once that uh, the community has invited a developer to come share information and answer some of our questions. And the developer has for whatever reason refused to make an appearance. So uh, keep in mind that attend community council meetings or board of commissioner meetings, be flexible, share information and answer questions. Also another consideration when out there with your project, if you have to post signs, um, are you aware of the ethnicity of the individuals who live, work, pray or play in that neighborhood? Uh, in some parts of our OKI region, those signs should be posted in both English and Spanish. That way those uh, folks who frequent the neighborhood, they are uh, informed in advance and they can make their plans accordingly. And of course, remember to increase the size of the print so that the signs are easier for senior citizens to read. Be certain to give the question on environmental justice serious consideration because members of our environmental justice advisory committee do closely review and score your answer to that question. The worst thing you can do is to leave the answer blank, especially since both Bob and I have mentioned on more than one occasion that you have the project application assistant that's available to help you identify whether your project is near or adjacent to an EJ community. Also keep in mind that now the score for the EJ planning factor has increased from five to 10 points. Now, if you decide or determine that in all honesty, your project really doesn't impact any EJ uh, population group, then use it as an opportunity to share the many benefits of your project to that host community. Remember, uh, OKI's goal is to always ensure that the investments we commit to transportation improvements don't cause undue hardship on any of our residents but especially undue hardship on residents living in any uh, or representing any of our EJ population groups. Remember to mitigate when and where necessary, but always communicate with your host community regarding your project. I thank you for your time and I hope some of this information is helpful. And now I'll turn the floor over to Andy. Thank you, Florence. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over the economic vitality score. Um, there are two components to this score, um, both worth five points. Uh, first is based on existing employment. And we are looking at the existing employment within a half mile buffer of the project. And this is something that you do not have to worry about scoring. Um, we will score that. Um, it's based on our uh, employment tool, which you can see in the lower left-hand corner there. There, um, it, it, the, the data comes from the different states, uh, Department of Jobs um, and Employment. And, um, and, and we'll take care of that. The second component, which is the new investment or new employment bonus, 
is also worth a uh, potential five points. And this is based on documented new investment or new employment within the project area. Again, we're looking at the same half mile uh, distance. And this has to be provided um, by you, by the applicant. Um, and what we're looking at is the number of new jobs or new private dollar investment in projects that are within that project area that the project will um, serve or benefit. Um, so we can't, um, cannot score based on just generalities um, that this project will benefit businesses in the area. We, we need specific uh, numbers and that are tied to a specific project that is either uh, very recent within the last few years or um, something that is happening in, in the coming, um, you know, coming five years. So that's what we're looking for. So uh, again, like Florence said, don't leave that blank. Um, if, if you have um, something to put there for that bonus, you want to take advantage of that. So talk to your economic development professionals or, or planners. Um, make sure that if you can claim those points, uh, you do. And now I will turn it over, I believe, to Travis. Um, Thanks Andy. Travis. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to cover uh, two planning criteria, first being the strategical, strategic regional policy plan. Uh, this assigns points to your application based on how well your project, your proposal advances uh, the OKI strategic regional policy plan. For reference, that plan is an online document. You can find it at howdowegrow.org. Uh, so all of the Recommendations and uh, issues of the plan are, are there for, for your review. Um, next slide, please. There are five points available here. Uh, so specifically, we are looking for projects that are either located within or have the, the ability to enhance a mix of land uses, projects that serve uh, brownfields or grayfield areas. These are properties that are underdeveloped or certainly underutilizing existing infrastructure. So if your project is going to stimulate growth, uh, be a catalyst for future growth, future development in an area that, uh, that fits into these categories, uh, we'll, we'll be providing points uh, for that. Projects that go beyond minimum requirements for uh, environmental impacts, addressing environmental impacts, we reward uh, with strategic regional policy plan points. So again, you need to go beyond what the minimum requirements are. But if you're doing that, if you're incorporating green infrastructure strategies, for example, uh, we'll reward uh, points in this category. Uh, and then finally, uh, projects that are along a, a major collector uh, or, or greater uh, that are also uh, in an area that's consistent with the development pattern uh, defined by the smart road transect uh, being between T4 or within T4 to T6. Uh, again, major collector um, will we'll receive points and strategic regional policy plan. Next slide. The other factor uh, that I'm covering is for comprehensive plans uh, under the local planning factor. Uh, so you'll receive up to five points for a project that is consistent with and advances uh, a local community comprehensive plan. Uh, so we look at uh, couple of things, consistency, obviously, as I mentioned, but also the age of the plan. So if this is what's considered a current plan, being a comprehensive plan that's less than five years old, uh, you'll get five points. Uh, if you're consistent with a local comprehensive plan, but that plan is greater than five years old, uh, you'll get partial points. Uh, three points are, are provided in those situations. Next slide. And finally, on this, uh, whoop, there we go. That's the slide I was looking for. Thanks, Summer. Uh, under the comprehensive plan factor, uh, just a couple of things to point out. Uh, make sure that you do provide us with the name uh, of the plan, the date that it was approved, uh, and specifically within the plan where your project is referenced. Oftentimes applicants uh, miss that and um, we want to make sure we get you the point. So uh, make sure you're identifying that for us. Um, we also accept plans that, that aren't may not be called a comprehensive plan or, or uh, officially a comprehensive plan, but if you have a neighborhood study plan or 
uh, a corridor plan um, that does have the elements of a comprehensive plan, uh, we will consider that for these points. So in those situations, uh, there are a series of questions that you will address that, uh, that helps justify and support your plan, whatever plan, type of plan that is, as a comprehensive plan. Now, if you, you have a comprehensive plan, you don't need to be answering these questions, and that's clear in the application form. Um, but for those of you that may be using a corridor plan or a neighborhood plan, you want to make sure you give us uh, sufficient detail in response to those so that we can, again, give you the points uh, um, that, uh, that, that uh, you deserve. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Summer. Thanks, Travis. All right, we're nearing the home stretch, guys. Um, just a little refresher on the TA funds. They're very similar to STP, but again, um, there are some differences. One of the big ones is they don't have to be located in the urbanized area um, or on a functionally classified road. It can be anywhere in the region. And also a big difference is that nonprofits can apply for TA funds. Um, but it really just depends with that on um, who is providing the local match. So if you're unsure on that, um, please contact me and I can help you work through that to see who exactly would be submitting the application and the LPA it would count towards. Um, as Bob mentioned, the maximum amount is 750,000 in Ohio. We have 2.2 million available and 500,000 in Kentucky and we have 500,000 available. So I'm imagining it will be quite competitive this year. So TA funds can be used for off and on-road pedestrian and bicycle facilities, infrastructure projects for improving non-drive access to public transportation and enhanced mobility and safe routes to school. Here are just a couple examples of projects eligible for TA funds. And the first TA is actually broken into first into two um, categories. The first is infrastructure, and there are five factors that we rank each project on. The first is project type, which is pretty self-explanatory. What it What is the project? It is a sidewalk, a multi-path, um, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon. Um, that can be up to 10 points. Um, the next one is safety. Um, how will the project impact safety? The existing safety problems must be documented along with the problem along with the plans for addressing these problems. The third factor is the OKI Metropolitan Transportation Plan consistency. Again, as Bob mentioned, the project does not have to be in the plan. It just has to be consistent with the plan. Um, so sidewalks, it doesn't have to be specified in the plan. It just has to be consistent and all sidewalks are consistent with our plan. Connections, this one is important. For TA uh, funds, it cannot be recreational. They have to connect to logical termini, so it cannot be a recreational trail loop. So um, we're really stressing the importance of making those connections. And the last factor is the project status. This is the same as the STP. Where in the project development are you? And are you asking for construction, right-of-way funds, um, same as STP? The next category for TA is the safe routes to school. And this is the planning, design, and construction of infrastructure-related projects on any public road or any bicycle or pedestrian pathway or trail in the vicinity of schools that will substantially improve the ability of students to walk and bicycle to school. A couple of things to point out um, about safe routes to school is that the project must be located within two miles of the school and only elementary and middle schools are eligible to apply. So high schools are not eligible, just elementary and middle school. And again, they must be located within two miles of a school. And there are actually seven factors that we rank each Safe Routes to School project on. The first one is a school travel plan. Um, you actually have to have a school pl travel plan to be eligible for this category. If you don't have a school travel plan, you can contact ODOT and they will help you design one. Um, education activities. Do you have any education activities aimed at helping to promote bicycling or walking to school? The same for encouragement activities. 
um, enforcement activities and project type. Um, again, is this a sidewalk? Are you asking for bike racks, lighting, or whatnot? Connections. Um, connections are valuable in this process and award points to projects making connections between streets and schools, discontinuous sidewalks or other connections such as facilitating access to school bus stops and project status, same as before. What is the status of the project? Summer? Yes. I have a question. Okay. It says FHWA says funding can be used for recreational trails because they also have transportation function. Why does OKI take this stance? Um, well, Bob, do you wanna answer that? Uh, I mean, transportation, is the main focus of OKI. Therefore, we're looking for OKI, we're looking for transportation only projects. And there are other forms of funding available out there for recreational trails. So, Bob, did I miss anything? You it, no, you said it perfectly. Our focus is transportation and um, there you have it. Are there any other questions, Regina? Not right now, thank you. Thank you. All right, and then um, PS projects are then ranked against all the planning factors, just like STP, um, as you see here, local share, air quality effectiveness, intermodal, replace and expansion, technology, the history of the project delivery, environmental justice, economic vitality, the investment employment bonus, the strategic regional policy plan, and the local planning. Um, as Bob did mention, the environmental justice factor went up to 10, it was five. And the air quality effectiveness actually was reduced from 10 to five to mirror the STP more closely. And just like the STP, we have a new air quality effectiveness um, cost model, as you can see here. Um, uh, the most points you can get is five. Again, this was based off of the CMAC air quality cost effectiveness. And um, if you have any questions about this, um, please let me know. But uh, a bike ped facility, a regional bike ped path will get the most points at five. And you take the safe routes to school factors or the TA factors, which equal 40 points. You add them with the planning factors for all projects for 55 points and the TA props the TA projects have a total of 95 points available. Um, again, we do have 2.2 million available. 750,000 is the max. I would assume it's gonna be competitive. So please do your due diligence with the application. Don't leave anything blank. And um, contact me if you have any questions or Andy Reeser, we are always happy to help. Um, are there any questions on the TA side before I turn it back to Bob? All right, then with that, I will turn it back to Bob. Thank you, Summer. Well done. Here you see the schedule. Um, today is March 9th. Uh, the application cycle is now officially kicked off. The, the um, application, well, I'll get into that in a second. They, they will be due June the 4th. That's the first Friday in June by uh, four o'clock and the prioritization subcommittee will well during the summer staff will look at it look at the applications and we'll run it through a bunch of different tests and um, discussions in, internally and then we'll bring it to the prioritization subcommittee in September uh, day after Labor Day so hopefully uh, y'all can still join us and uh, if we need to as a auxiliary date on the 14th uh, we'll meet again, but usually we haven't in recent years haven't needed that extra date. And then with the goal of bringing it to the ICC in October, as well as the OKI board for their approval. And then um, the official authorization body for the CMAC is the Ohio um, MPO directors, or rather executive directors, I should say. They actually approved the um, program of CMAC projects. So that'll happen in December. And then like we did this year, this spring, um, but a year from now, we'll be including those projects 
in the OKI TIP for federal funding. And I do want to add that um, if you're fortunate enough to get awards for OKI funds, we do appreciate knowing when you have like major milestones like groundbreaking and ribbon cutting. And um, when you're talking to the media, you know, it's always, we always uh, feel good when we hear that OKI got mentioned as part of the funding package. So um, just a reminder, we, we do appreciate it when you do things like that because you, you are part of OKI, so you all deserve credit when we allocate funds for important projects to our communities. And we want our communities to know that we've been actively involved in, in their projects. Okay, next. Next, the app. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, there is a comment, trails must have connections to different points can't be loop trails. And then it says, therefore, trip purpose, recreation slash transportation is okay. Well, uh, yeah, if, a, if you can make a trip other than going in a circle, then you could conceivably call that transportation. So we would agree. And that's why um, when you're in inside a park and you're not really going anywhere, that's not transportation. And we don't fund projects like that. Um, there is a there is an element in the recreational trails federal guidance that would allow for that to be funded with transportation dollars, but is that our discretion? And these are that's the the stance that we take. We're looking for transportation projects. Um, you know, there's a good example of that in our region um, when the when the new connection across the Little Miami River at the Beachmont Levee goes in place, you could technically say that the por portion of the Lunkin Trail would then be, become a transportation facility because you can go from, let's just say, Newtown to downtown. Currently, as it exists, it's just recreation. I don't think anyone would deny the fact that it's recreation. But with a new connection, um, that could conceivably be considered, be considered part of the regional trail system and, and likely would. Um, so there's a distinguishing factor there. Um, so back to the application, it's, as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, that it's a Microsoft Excel based application that can be found on our uh, page at funding.oki.org. And um, some of the important things are, of course, we need to know who you are, who your agency is, um, the project name and description, what's the primary goal of your project? You know, please don't send us five pages or please don't say, here, read this link. You know, that's not what we're looking for. We want something that is clear, concise, gets to the point. Um, and then in, in the application itself, I'm gonna pull it up in a second. Uh, the cost estimates, they got to be provided by phase. Um, then there's a certifications page. And that says, yeah, we're in. We have full support from our agency, our leadership. And we certify that we're going to maintain this project after we build it. Um, we're going to preserve the federal investment for the terms of its useful life, all those things. And then um, if I don't get to this in the application portion itself, there's a, a place where you can insert a map uh, as well as some other documentation. Um, Member Andy Meyer said that we're looking for documentation for the bonus for the economic vitality. That would be a place in the attachments tab of this thing to add that. Um, again, we're not looking for hundreds of pages of a comprehensive plan. We're not looking for 45 letters of support that all say the same thing. You know, we just, uh, we know that your project has support through the certifications portion of it. I'm glad that you have 45 letters of support. That's wonderful. Uh, but um, this is a metric based process that we're trying to get the best of the best projects. And so I'd rather you spend your time giving us good information and thoughtful information, uh, including all the things. And I want to go back to um, at the risk of being out of order here, 
not out of order <laughs> in some ways, but out of order in the slides. When Florence mentioned the environmental justice element, um, it's important on two fronts. One, that's the only score that staff doesn't actually preside over, our environmental justice coordinating committee, advisory committee rather, they assign that score. And then the second thing I wanna say about that, if you leave it blank, um, two bad things happen. One, you're gonna get zero or uh, we're just gonna not accept the application. That's a very important element. And so uh, there's got to be something in there that you know, demonstrates the impacts to our communities. And I'm sure your project um, can have some uh, response in that category. But you know, if it's if it's really no impact, then that's fine. Tell us there's no impact. You just can't leave it blank. Okay, Summer, if you would be so kind, while I'm saying a couple other things uh, to bring up the application itself, um, you saw the screen there briefly. Now, now it's back up for a second. Call Andy Reeser or Summer Jones. Andy's our point person on the STBG and CMAC, and Summer is our point person on TA. But uh, they both can answer questions, uh, usually on different aspects of either program, as can I and, and other staff members. And of course, you have, if you have questions about the economic vitality, you can call Andy Meyer, or if it's SRPP or local plans, you can contact uh, Travis Miller. So those are our contacts. So Summer, if you can pull up the Excel-based application. Do you care for which one? Uh, bring up the roadway, please. Any new questions, Regina? No. Any words of wisdom, Regina? Any words of wisdom? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Lori did mention <clears throat> she would love to share your the projects process on OKI's Facebook and Twitter accounts. And if you post an update on your social media, please remember to tag OKI. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can also contact Lori. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question from transit point of view, maybe for Travis on the local planning factors, we always find it hard to concretely have support, you know, when our buses go all over the county. Is there a better way we can get all those points one way or the other? John Transit usually fares pretty well with the comp plan. Are you specifically talking about the comp plan or SRP? Yeah, yeah, the comp plan. Yeah. yeah, I didn't mention this. I'm glad you brought the question up. Um, for routine maintenance uh, and for transit, this would include a bus replacement, not a new bus, but if you're replacing buses, we consider that maintenance. Uh, and for roadways, if it's again, you know, paving project or something that's not expanding capacity, um, but it's, it's strictly a routine maintenance it's an automatic five points for the comprehensive plan. That's seen as inherent to maintaining the region's transportation system. Um, so those get both transit or roadway that would be considered maintenance get the automatic five. Okay, thank you. Be beyond no. that, if it's new buses and you're expanding, then you know working with local communities to include transit in their comprehensive plans, it's certainly appropriate for comprehensive plans to have goals and strategies for transit. So work closer with the local communities, John. Okay. John, it's Florence, and I wanted to uh, would like to share with all transit agencies that with this new score, these new points of uh, 10 points for the EJ uh, planning factor, to keep in mind that, and I've observed this from working with the EJ advisory committee, that they really are looking for substance from the applicant regarding the need for, for uh a request for funding, say to purchase buses. They know it's, it's understood that of course, most new buses address and try to um, keep uh, the emissions down. Also, most new buses come with uh, uh, the bike racks on the front, but the committee is really looking 
for direction from the applicant that says we are also trying to increase a ridership. So before in past history, when an application was reviewed uh, by, from a transit agency by the committee, you know, it would almost be an automatic five points. But I think the committee uh, agencies need to be aware that is no longer the case that the committee members are really looking for more uh, supportive information regarding your request for funding. So really try to think out of the box in terms of uh, requesting that funding and when addressing that EJ uh, question on the application. I do have a couple questions, Bob. Go ahead. It asked if you could repeat the five modes up for complete streets. Is one. Is this a test? <laughs> Traffic calming, transit, fixed route transit, uh, vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Okay, and I have another question. What are examples of transportation, transit, support types of projects? Support could be, there's not a lot of them, but would be um, maybe putting in a new AVL system. It's really not necessary to have AVL, but it's a nice addition. Uh, another thing might be, um, a bus barn, a uh, repair shop kind of thing. Remember last year we funded the uh, tank um, shop over there in, in, in Fort, Mit, uh, Fort, Fort Wright. Uh, so that was one of the projects. That was a support facility where they maintain their buses. Thank you. Sure. Okay, now we have on the screen, thanks to Summer Jones, the uh, application and when you go to the website you gotta make sure you select the right one there's a stbg for roadways and it looks like this is what she's brought up yes uh, so the first there's a bunch of tabs along the bottom there you see getting started application information so on and so forth um, they move as you progress when you get to the bottom of each screen there's a next button and you can go back and forth manually, or you can just go through and cycle through the questions and it'll take you through. So um, she's clicked on the begin application. You see um, it asks you for the state and you click on that and you get either Ohio or Kentucky uh, and you gotta pick one. So she picks one and then she types in a project name. And then if it's, let's say um, Covington, you know, the city of Covington, that would go in there in the applicant name. No, 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 that would be, project name would be like, I don't know, widening of Sixth Street, something like that. The project name, applicant name rather, would be city of Covington. And then the contract name would be um, Mr. Smith, uh, superintendent of roadways or whatever, contact title, superintendent of roadways, Email, we've got to have that, uh, the mailing address, the phone number. And then here's um, where we want to say something like widen 6th Street from Madison to Scott, something along those lines. Uh, add sidewalks, reconstruct roadway, whatever it might be. Um, we really want it to fit in that box. Then the next tab will be cost estimates. It's, this is kind of fixed. It won't let you do too many bad things. Not bad things, but you, know, uh, you can not hardly get this wrong. But we do want to know what fiscal year you're searching for funds in for each phase. And then uh, the, the requested amount, the local match, and then it will do the arithmetic for you. If you don't get 20%, um, it shows you, it scolds you. Um, so in this case, you put in 2,000 out of the 7,000, which computes to a 28.6% match. Good job, you end up, uh, you may end up getting bonus points 
not bonus points, but additional points in that category. But you got to do that for all the phases that you're asking for funding for. So in the old application, we actually asked for that. It's like, that's redundant. We don't need to do that. We can, we can get that through here. So um, I'm done with that. I click to the next tab. And um, this is where you do all the certifications. We, we have to ask these questions. Um, our federal agencies strongly encourage us. Now we haven't taken any money back for communities from communities that don't have an ADA transition plan. Um, but if your project has ADA elements uh, or requirements and they're not part of your project, the project's gonna die on the vine at the state um, DOT level because they're looking for those design elements and they would come from a, an, a compliant ADA plan. So think about those things and you wonder why we're asking. Um, that's one of the reasons. Um, usually the person who is uh, responsible for, uh, you already have a, a signed document and plan that's easy to get. You're accepting federal funds for anything, for something else more than likely. So you probably already have a Title VI. You probably already have an ADA plan. Um, Got to root those out, find the title and the date and so on forth. Next. Okay, all those planning factors that we recently talked about, um, that's where you get those, or that's where you put that information rather. Um, in that blue box, it says go to Appendix A and go to Project Application Assistant. Remember I told you it was embedded in the application? That's what I was talking about. Click on the go to project application assistant, Summer. Well, it, when, this, um, when this works, you will, it will open up the application and then you'll go to, let's say, a place on Coleraine Avenue and you will click on it and then all the aspects of that project that have underlying data that can inform this application will be available to you. Sorry, Bob, it pulled up on my end, but it's still only showing the application. Okay. So uh, it does work. It's just, I can, I think I can only share one screen at a time. Yeah, it just opens a new window. Yeah. So she's not sharing that window. Thank you. Um, and also the next tab, PAA results. If Summer could show you, there is a specific location. Summer, click on the PAA results. The next tab over on the bottom. Right here at next to roadway factors. Or click on the tab at the bottom. Okay, there's a, <laughs> under the blue bar that says project application assistant map, it says place cursor here. If you do a snip of that PAA, you must put your cursor here and then hit the paste function to bring that map in. So that's, that's one thing that is very rigid in this thing, but it's because uh, it's the only way to do it effectively and protect the application itself. So I, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, then you, you can look at the information and go back a tab, fill in ADT and all those other things that are uh, measures that are available. Okay, um, next tab, planning factors. We talked about those, one after that. You can either tab to the next, next one or go all the way to the bottom and hit next. There's the uh, environmental justice. And then the next tab is um, for the investment bonus and the SRPP and the plan itself. And then um, the two ancillary tabs, one for your appendix. Next one to the right, Summer. Appendix A, that's a resource that ties back into the um, impact on safety that I mentioned earlier. Appendix B is the, the um, for the air quality lookup table. And 
and I believe that's it. Yes, that's it. Um, so I just wanted to give you just take a few minutes to go over that application with you. It'll it'll make more sense when you are able to sit down at your own speed and and go through it. It's pretty easy. Basically, the same information, just in a slightly different format. And I I do like the enhancement of the embedded uh, project application assistant. So um, I've kept you a long time, and I apologize for that. But I hope this was useful to you. Our our goal was to get information that you can use. Uh, if you still need more information, call us. If you'd like to meet with us, we're always open for that too. Uh, sometimes we find out ways to um, make your application better or to maybe help you identify how you should make your application, which parts of your project may be um, well suited for one thing or another. I'm not sure if you have a TA project or an STBG um, it's usually a, a, a question that some people have uh, that are kind of new to our process. They're not sure which application to use, and we can help you with that. There's no need not to ask questions. We're, we're here to help. And um, so I will stop there and see if there are any additional questions that any of us can answer. Uh, yes, uh, Mary. Sorry, Sorry. Regina. <laughs> Could you uh, mention the fiscal year for the funding again to everyone? Yeah, uh, we have, most of our funds are for fiscal year 25. And I did mention that we would like to fill in the fiscal year 26 CMAC pool in Ohio. Um, for whatever reason, the state committee really looks out further than we really care to. Um, but we um, we want to make sure we're prepared in that venue. So if you guys need project money for 26. That's probably we'll pr probably try to fill up that bin, if you will. And will this presentation be available on OKI's website? Yes, we will make this available on our website. Thank you. And I'll just add that the uh, the video of this presentation will also be up on the website um, within a couple of days. The PowerPoint, we should be able to get that up there today and the video in a few days from now. And funding.oki.org is where you can get all this information. It's live right now. I'm looking at it. And that's where you can download the applications. The guidance documents are also there and where you will eventually submit your application. Yeah, good point, Andy. I forgot to mention that, I don't know if you can see that, but 24 pages of detailed information on, on uh, to help you fill out your application and how we actually score them. So it's all there. And that's uh, what Andy referred to as the guidance document. I do have another question. Shoot. Are you anticipating any funding this year from the upcoming stimulus? I believe we already addressed that. Um, we have this CRISA funding. I don't know that there's going to be anything included in that $1.9 trillion bill that is in the house. Uh, I kind of doubt it, but Lori did mention that there is a push to develop a new federal transportation bill and the, and the magnitude of three to four trillion dollars uh, by the 4th of July, fix it by the 4th is what Lori said. Uh, so I don't know, it could be. So if you've got projects, get them to us. Uh, you know, if we need to pivot and um, for any reason, you know, the more projects we have going forward, the better. Um, but get us your best projects. So I don't know yet. That's all. Thank you. And I'll just mention that contact information is up on your screen for, for me and Summer. And uh, if we are working remotely, that phone number will go to our office and you can leave a voicemail and we get notified immediately when we have new voicemails. So we'll be sure to call you back. 
please call us with any questions. We're here to help. And don't forget, if you have a question about environmental justice, contact Florence Parker. Okay, well, I guess we'll wrap it up then. Uh, thanks again for sticking around with us. Wish you the best. I know this time of year is, there are lots of application processes going on. So um, sorry to add to your workload, but you know, it's worth it, 80% on the dollar. All right, take care y'all. Well Thank done, you. guys. Ready to go. All right, thanks. Bye.